Good evening, good evening, good evening. I um, wanted to come in and share something that's on my heart. If this is your first time here, I'm R.C. Blakes. I'm a pastor, I'm an author, and uh, I'm a man with some opinions. And um, so I have something that I want to share tonight. Um, try to be as brief as I possibly can, but you all know how that goes. Um, there's a chapter in my book um, in time, the title of the book is The Father-Daughter Talk, and there's a chapter in this book that talks about chapter four, never be with a man who makes you afraid. These are the things every father should teach his daughters. And um, the subtitle of this chapter is No Woman Was Created to Be Abused at the Hands of a Sick Man. And I wanted to just, I wanted to address this tonight um, because there's so much toxic, um, sick, twisted ideas about what manhood is and what masculinity is. Thank you, Kimberly. And um, I see so many games that are being played and I see so many uh, fatherless women falling for it. And when I say fatherless, I'm not necessarily talking about your dad didn't love you, your dad wasn't there, your dad didn't provide, your dad wasn't in the home. I'm talking about you've not been fathered. You can have a father and not necessarily um, have been fathered by your father. In other words, there's a disconnect. And so the things that should have been imprinted on your subconscious mind about who you are, about life, and about how to deal with sick men, you never got those lessons. And so I teach, you know, you, you really either learn through um, instruction or you learn through experience. The sad reality is that most women are left to learn the most difficult lessons in life through experience. And so here I am. Thank you so much. Here I am. I, I don't, you know, I don't know why. Um, I don't know why God just kind of planted me in this vein to do what I do. Um, some people get here and they do this kind of thing because they needed to succeed. I was already a success. I already had my life on point. I'm a pastor, pastor, a tremendous church. I didn't need, I didn't need a platform. You know, I didn't need popularity. I didn't need these things like a lot of people do. It wasn't about ambition. It was really just God put this on my heart to speak into the lives of a generation or even generations of women, the things that their fathers never did so that you would stop making the same mistakes that generations of women have made who've not been fathered, who've not been taught as, as, as we put it today, the game. Because while, while you as a woman, while you're taking relationships and life and men and all of that stuff seriously, the, the harsh reality, if I can just be honest with you, is that 98% of these guys see it as a game. And while your heart is completely and totally invested, you're dealing, with, you're dealing with dudes who are cold as ice because they're not mature enough to really understand what's at stake. Now, I don't want you all to, um, and this is not organized, so allow me to just kind of rant. I don't want you all to, to, to feel hopeless like all is lost because here's, here's, here's a hard truth. And I'll get, to, I'll get to what I want to talk about. Here's a hard truth. Many of you say, ain't no good men out here. And the reality is, it's not true. It's just not the case. The reality is, thank you, thank you. The reality is, 
you are not attracted to the good ones. The good ones turn you off. In fact, about it, I wish I was, I wish I had the, the thing. I'll, I'll, snap, I'll take a snapshot of it and I'll show it to you one day. A dear heart that follows me um, got rid of a, a guy that uh, abused her and, and got her mind right and went back to a place, you know, and looked at a guy that she had never been attracted to. And all of a sudden she saw him differently. When she got whole and healed, she saw, she saw the guy differently. The guy had always been there, but she was never attracted to him. And now I think if I'm, if I'm remembering it correctly, now they're married. So a lot of you who say there are no good men is that you keep fishing from the same pond expecting a different kind of uh, catch. And the ponds you pass by that you're not attracted to are the ponds where you should actually be fishing. So we have to really work on getting you whole and healthy because sometimes you, you may be your own worst problem. But here's, here's what I want to deal with. You're never supposed to, thank you so much, you're never supposed to tolerate or continue not even a conversation with a man that uses language to shame you. You're not supposed to continue showing up for a man that shames you. Who has, who has any more of a past than a man? You know, who, who has any more of a past that they should be shame of than a man? I'm sitting here as I'm a pastor. I'm a pastor of pastors. And I've shared a lot of my life with you all. But there are parts of my life that I'm so, it's just ridiculous that I, when I think about it, I, I went that low. So when you get a man that is so calculated as to take your life and maybe some of the mistakes that he's been made privy to and use that to shame you, you're dealing with a very diabolical individual that is very intentional because that's where, that's where the game starts. That's where the manipulation starts. A man takes a woman, now listen to this very carefully. This is the stuff, some of the stuff your daddy should have taught you. A man takes a woman that's, let's say she's a 10, since we, since, you know, y'all can see it. Let's say she's a 10, she's a nine, she's an eight in reality. On whoever scale, I don't know who, who creates a scale, but since y'all got this imaginary scale, let's say she's a 10. He knows she's a 10. Now, watch this. If he's a 10 of a man, he's going to appreciate her. But if he's a, a four or a five or a three, he's going to work over time to diminish her self perspective because he knows that he does not qualify, but she doesn't know it because society has trained her through media, through uh, print, uh, through every, every, every medium that this is the kind of guy you need. He got to look a certain kind of way. He got to have a certain swag. He got to have X amount of dollars. He got to be a, a difficult man to deal with. He has to be, um, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? I can't, I can't pull it up, but he has to be a guy that it's unrealistic to think you're ever going to really lock this guy down. You know, that kind of guy. If you, from my era, he has to be the shaft kind of guy, the kind of man that, you know, in the course of an hour and a half movie, sleep with five different women, but that's the one you, you want. That's the one society says you need. You see, he got to drive a fast car and he has to be, um, I can't believe I can't pull the word up, unattainable. That's not actually the word, actually the word I want, but that's what society has conditioned you to believe you want. And this guy is actually a three on the scale of manhood, true manhood. This guy is a three. Most of you all, okay, okay, let me just say it. Most of you all have been conditioned to be attracted to threes. 
and you're so blinded by the lies and the broken consciousness that you believe that the three is a ten. While you have another guy that society says this guy is a three or four who's really a ten. See, because all that stuff y'all judging on now, and I, I'm, I'm mixing all of this up because it's just something on my heart. All that stuff y'all judging on now is not going to matter. It's, it's really not going to. When, when you get to midlife, like me, me and my, my little wife now, we got together. We was young. You know what I mean? She, you, you know, she was a 10 for real in every respect. I was, I was never a 10, not according to the world standard, but according to my standard, I was a 20. And I think she was attracted to my confidence as a man. Thank you so much. I was a 20. You know, looks wise, man, I never did. Never. People always try to figure out how did this dude get this kind of, this beautiful woman? Well, it was because my wife did not judge me based on I was broke, I was overweight, but I had extreme confidence and I had a good heart. Did you hear what I just said? I was broke, I was overweight, I had extreme confidence. And I think she was attracted to that. One moment I said to her, I'm not, I don't want to be married. Move on with your life. I didn't say it like that. I was very respectful. But she did exactly that. She started dating a wealthy guy, a fit guy. She started dating a man that was a major league baseball player. I'm sitting there looking at the dude on the, one of the uh, World Series things. And then I woke up and realized, man, you're missing your wife. And I, I called her and said, you know, X, Y, Z, long story short, she, she came on back. Well, why did she come back? It's because she was never, she was never, she was never judging me based on those external things that do not last. She was judging me based on my safeness as a man, based on uh, my character and the way I treated her. If she was judging me based on the stuff that y'all judging on, we wouldn't be married. There's no way in the world she should have left that dude coming back to me. I was broke and overweight. Thank you so much. So you have to, and I know I'm mixing it up because this is no arg This is just something that's coming that's on my heart. I'm just sharing my heart with you tonight because I'm feeling, so I'm feeling some kind of way. You have to judge. Are you really attracted to men? Because a man will never, listen to me, the true standard of a man, he will never use his words to destroy or pull a woman down. Because a man understands, watch this, that really the whole kingdom is dependent on healthy queens. So watch this. Even if he's not, even if he's not interested, if he knows he's not, you know, it's not going anywhere, he will never shame you or belittle you or break you down. He will never do it. A man will never take your history. He will never take your mistakes and throw them back in your face. It's only little boys that fight with women. Thank you so much. And what I'm discovering is, I'm just got, I just got to say it now. I just got to say it. I'm discovering that you're having a whole lot of men or so-called men that actually hate women. And they convince you that, you know, I'm, I'm what you need. I'm what you're looking for. I'm the standard. And then you submit yourself to them and then they begin to run the game of destroying your self-consciousness, emptying your self-esteem and breaking you down intentionally. And you keep showing up for it. Why would you show up? Why would you continue to reach out to a man that is constantly breaking you down on purpose? Every time you leave this man, you feel shame. Why? I know, we, you know, a man should never put his hands on a woman under 
you know, no circumstance, unless she's trying to kill him and that's the only way he can, he can save his life. But apart from that, you all, many of you are signing up for dudes to just run you through with words that are sharp as knives. And you're doing many times what is what, what could be irreparable damage to your soul. Because you're sitting and you're listening, you're listening to these, these, these dudes, man, and they're just breaking you down. And you, you sit in there, in all actuality, if, we, if the scale were real, you sitting there at a 10, 9, or 8, and this dude is a 3, and he has convinced you that you are less than he is. Because God somehow engineered the woman because the woman is what? She's the nurturer of the family. So the woman has a natural um, bent towards empathy and compassion. The Lord has, it's like the creator has naturally engineered the woman in a way that you are extremely sensitive to the opinions of men, especially if this may be the one you're going to build your legacy with. And so you take these cats' opinions very seriously, like, like, like they husband or somebody. And here's the reality, and I talk about it all the time. When, when a man wants to manipulate your life and steer your life in the direction he wants your life to go in as a strong, independent, educated whatever kind of woman you want to call yourself, the first thing he does is he begins to disapprove of you. He'll slide into your life like he's Prince Charming, like, you know, he's the best thing since sliced bread. And then once you get it, once he gets in there and you let those guards down, especially, especially, especially if you go as far as to have sex with him. See, because when a woman has sex, typically, see, a man can have sex and his heart can be completely closed. And, you know, always was closed. It was just for him to just exercise. But typically, typically, now we have a broken generation of women that's changing this a little bit. Typically, when a woman has sex, it means that her heart is open. So once he knows that your heart is open, now he begins to shoot darts of disapproval. Because the way he manipulates you is to put you on the approval treadmill. I call it the approval trap, where now you live your life for the approval of the man that disapproved of you and made you think differently about yourself. And I'm seeing this happen. I'm watching this happen. I'm watching this happen. And... There are too many of you all that keep showing up for this. And you're not judging these guys. You're not judging their character. You're just looking at what they drive. Quite honestly, I mean, I'm 56 years old, so I know this may be a different generation, and maybe I'm just clueless. But quite honestly, what I, what I, what I know about life is that a man that really has money doesn't lead with it. He doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't try to impress you with his money or his things. He's not flaunting that stuff. Uh, usually when a man is flaunting things, he's trying to trap a gullible woman who's not queen conscious and who probably has not had, thank you so much, who's probably not had a father-daughter talk, so she's not hip to the game. And he knows the way to get her is to... Um, impress her with these things that society says. This makes for the kind of man you want. And then once he gets you, then he begins to erode your soul with intentional, intentionally hurtful, demeaning words. So watch this. You have to start with your standards. 
You have to start with your standards. Thank you so much. You have to start with your standards. You keep showing up for that. You keep respond, responding to that. Keep falling for that. You, you're just going to continue to fall for that. You're going to continue to show up for that. You're going to continue to allow. And some people get upset with me when I use language. They say, our oh, preacher shouldn't you. There's some things I got to say for the, the purpose of driving my point home. Some people don't get it. Everybody's just so overly religious and just, you know, you just, 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 just take everything and, and you just stretch it all out of proportion. You miss the point. You're going to allow an inferior to manipulate you. You got to stop showing up for it. You got to do better. And I'll be quite honest with you. And this may just be a mass counseling session here. It starts with you breaking your addiction to relationships and non-ordained sex. If, if, if we can get you to commit to breaking your addiction to situationships, we can't even call that relationships, thank you so much. And if we can get you to say, God, I need you to strengthen me and purge me so that I can step out of illicit sexual relationships. And if I can get you to come back to self-discovery, see, because now an another lie that they tell you is, oh, well, you see a certain age and it's, it's over for you. It's over for you. It's a lie. That's a lie. I, I have a spiritual daughter. I know she's my age, at least. Lisa may know her exact age. Just got married, I think, last year. For the first time, she's in a, she's in her fifties, maybe, maybe, maybe 60, got married for the first time last year. Uh, uh, and y'all got these people, these people got you believing, oh, well, you see you, you this age. And so now it's all over for you. It's over. It's over. Man, listen, number one, as I always teach you. If you commit yourself to self-development and if you live for the standard that you have in your own heart for you, what happens is you become exactly what you what you need to attract. Thank you so much. As opposed to sitting there wasting two decades looking at some imaginary clock. And allowing all of these clowns to pour all of this trash into your mind so that you can't even see your own worth. If you can't see your own worth, you always sell yourself cheap. Thank you. It ain't over. It ain't over. How are you going to tell me? Okay, let me, let me just give you some common sense here. Let me just run some common sense down to you now. I'm 56 years old. You know, I know I'm I know I'm the kind of man I need a wife. Thank you so much. God forbid something happened to my wife. I'm looking for a wife. And now and a grown man, he ain't looking for I'm not looking for nobody my children's age. I'm not looking for no nobody my children's age. I want somebody that, that's along my way that can understand my language and like my music. So you got dudes my age whose whose wives are passing on every day. They're becoming widowed. And so how are you going to tell me because you 50 years old, you 60 years old, that it's over for you when you got a whole new generation of men that's on the market. But see, when, 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 when you are locked in on the idea, you're going to get one of these little children running around here flashing all these labels and all of this stuff. Well, you're not of a mindset to attract that. See, you never thought about it like that. You got dudes my age whose wives are passing on every day and they still they out here looking for wives. They just can't find a healthy woman who's not been impacted by toxic masculinity. Misogyny. And then watch this. You preoccupy it with clowns. So when the real dude pass by, you're not available. You never available. And then you say, ain't no good men out here. And it, it ain't true. It ain't true. You got to get yourself together. And I see y'all like me to just talk nice and sweet to you. 
But the, the reality is you got to get yourself together. You got to stop looking outside and trying to reach all of these old fa false pseudo standards of beauty and, and whatever, whatever, whatever. And you got to go inside and you have to figure out now who am I? What's the best version of me? And you got to begin to perfect your life to that standard. And you know what? When you go inside and you begin to perfect your life to the standard that you have on the inside of your own heart, you're going to be too preoccupied with self-development to be sitting around here worrying about, you know, am I going to get married this year? Is, is a man available? They say there ain't no more men around here. Come on now. Come on now. And then you got to go back to your the reality of what you what you view as a man. Because quite honestly, what y'all calling a man, that ain't no man y'all talking about. That's clowns. That's children. That's little boys. That's, 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 that's mid, middle aged men many times having um, midlife crisis and behaving like little ad pubescent ad adolescent boys. So I can't even blame them because if you let them play, if you let them continue to play the same game on you, see, it's a different story. If you just you you 18 years old, you just on the college campus and somebody run this game on you. But 18, 28, 30, 48, you still allowing the same game. Well, at a certain point, you moved from victim status to volunteer. And, and that could be because nobody's really set you down to have this conversation with you to tell you what's really going on. But in, in the back of your mind, you, you knew what was going on. But you allow this damage to continue to happen to your soul. And then at a certain point, it almost becomes impossible for you to see yourself the way you need to see yourself to demand your price. Okay, here's another one. Well, you know, you're certain you're, you're, you're certain dress size. Babe, let me tell you something. I'm 56 years. I'm a 56 year old man. And um, I've lived a little, little life. I promise you I have. One of the biggest lies told. One of the biggest lies told, thank you, is that uh, a plus size woman is not attractive to a certain kind of man. I have some dudes that are six and seven figure guys, well known, who don't want anything but a plus size woman. If their wife were to lose weight, they would have a fit. And, and here's another lie, that the, your dress size is an indication of your fitness. All of us should strive to be fit. I'm, stri I'm trying to get there. I'm, tr I'm really trying to get there. But there are a whole lot of women who, who wear a size this size, that size, that, who are fit. And then you got some women who wear in a two, three, four, five, and they are not fit. So, see, these are lies that you have bought into that serve to keep you in bondage. And now here's, here, let me, let me wrap this up now. And so here, here's what happens. Let me calm down. Thought I had some water in here, but I don't. Here's what happens. You endure years and years and years of this abuse and this intentional rejection. And what happens is, it begins to have an impact on your soul. And you, you, you know, you be, you, what's happening is your spirit is broken and you're hurt. And then society takes your hurt that begins to show up on your countenance, show up in your behavior. Society takes your hurt and your society defines your, your hurt as anger. She's an angry woman. It used to be just she's an angry black woman. Now they got the angry white woman. They got the she's angry. And the reality is that's that's psychology. No, no, she's reacting to the abuse that she's endured for so many years. And and the pain, you see. But now you, it's time for you to put yourself in a place where you can heal. Because. That 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 pain is showing up in in the way you uh, deal with good guys. So now a good man shows up in your life, and he getting the scowl now. You know, he, because you don't trust, 
because and you don't trust because you've been constantly disappointed and you've been constantly disappointed because you keep submitting and surrendering yourself over to the wrong kind of man. See, you, you need a man that's going to love you, not a man that's judging you, not a man that's measuring you up, um, you know, to, to, to this or to that A man that loves you. And then you give that man the best version of you and he gives you the best version of him. That's how you create a power couple. All of this old fake uh, materialistic and, um, you know, surface level interaction. That's for children. That's for children. You need somebody that feels you from the inside out. And together you all create a life that you could have never had separately. But you got both of y'all got to be healthy. And it starts with you. Because the right kind of man is searching for a woman that's healthy enough. How does he know you're healthy enough? He knows you're healthy enough when you're so consumed with purpose that you're not sitting around just surfing on the, uh, you know, the Instagram or the Facebook all day looking for a man. He knows that you're healthy enough when you're perfectly content. See, if you're not perfectly content within yourself and within your own world, you ain't ready for nobody else. I couldn't, there's no way in the world. Okay, let me give you, let me give you a real life example that some of you all may be able to get. There's no way in the world if something were to happen to my wife that I could have a woman in my life that would be so needy and so um, consumed with me, not having her own life, her own pursuits. There's no way in the world. I don't have the time for that. I don't have the time for that. I, I, I got to have a woman that, that's doing her own thing, smart enough, sharp enough to step into my situation, help me out because I ain't that bright all the time. And is secure enough in herself that she can let me interact with the world. And I, you know, and, and, and she not have no issues with that. Well, you, you don't get that kind of woman, you know, when you, when you start dealing with a woman that's, um, that needs a man to bring fulfillment to her life. No, man, the kind of man you're looking for, he, 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 don't, he don't want that. So you got some work to do. And it starts with, you got to stop allowing these clowns to talk to you any kind of way. And that don't mean you kick your shoes off and act a fool in the street. That means you block people, you delete people, you move on from people when you hear that stuff coming out their mouth. And that means you have to recondition your soul that that stuff does not stick. You cannot internalize these lies anymore. That means you have to be, you must begin to talk to yourself you got to read the kind of books that build you up. You got to start setting your goals and reaching for your own goals so you can have self-esteem from within, not needing any cheerleaders on the outside to say you're doing a great job. That means setting your own fitness goals. Don't let no man come in your life and tell you this is what you got to be. No, 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 no. You find your own fitness goals. Where are you comfortable? Where are you happy? Where, where, where do you need to get to make certain that you feel good about yourself in the morning? And if, if homeboy don't, if he, if he ain't digging it, that's all right. We all got. All right, I'm done. That's all I wanted to say. That's all I wanted to say. I love you. I love you. I really do. And. Hey, I guess y'all don't like me. I ain't got but 471 thumbs. <laughs> so I guess I ain't got no, I don't think I have a, a great approval rating on this one tonight. But I love you all. And seriously, that's from my heart. And I hope you don't take my energy the wrong way. You know, I'm, I'm just, I'm just trying to help. Honestly, that's all I'm doing. I'm just trying to help. That's all I'm doing. I'm just trying to help. I'm just trying to help. I love you all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you all soon, maybe even tomorrow, because this was impromptu. I'll talk to you all soon. Maybe we'll go further into it. I love you. Have a great night now. Talk to you real soon. Thank you.